Hello and welcome back to Super Game Drive. It's been a while and I thought I'd do a little, I wouldn't say tutorial, but a little piece on N64 emulation in 2023 because N64 emulation is still not where it should be. However, there are certain ways to run the most difficult games. And today I'm going to run you through how to download RetroArch, set it up, and run Donkey Kong 64 in widescreen with no camera jumping and uh, looking nice as well because that's one of the harder games to run. So instead of giving you a backstory on the N64, when it was released and how well it sold like everybody else does, I'm just going to get straight into how to run ROMs essentially on RetroArch. So let's get to it. So the absolute first thing you're going to need is RetroArch itself, which is a piece of emulator software that runs multiple game consoles, uh, ROM files, and uh, sort of user-developed software as well. But we're going to use it today to run uh, N64. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the RetroArch website, which is just RetroArch.com, and you want to get RetroArch. Uh, download the nightly or the download the stable. The stable is just the most current, um, most tested version of the of the software. But I always do the nightly just because there'll be new features that I want to test out. Um, it's up to you which one you get. They're both pretty much going to have the same thing. I get the I get the nightly one, so that's the one I've installed. So you click download nightly, and it'll start downloading. Mine will download in the background since I have uh, silent downloads on. So once RetroArch uh, has downloaded, you'll find the install file here. It's downloaded twice because it's downloaded the background for this tutorial, basically. So <laughs> that's why it's there. Uh, I've already installed it. Once it's installed, uh, you can just go ahead and open that up. Should have done that better. The first thing it's going to do, it's actually going to open like this in a window. It's going to open in a window. You can either press Alt and Enter together to make it full screen, or you can hit the little window tab up here and go full screen. And then it's going to do a reset. And then the very next thing you're going to want to do as soon as you open up RetroArch is you want to go to the online updater. And once you're in here, uh, you want to go to update core info files, update assets, Update controller, update cheats, you get the point. All these. Update all of these as soon as you do it. That will download the newest files uh, from RetroArch themselves to do with your sort of, like as it says, controller profiles and core info files. Now, cores are essentially emulators that run inside RetroArch. They are just files that people update um, and they represent the emulators themselves, and that's what you'll be running to actually then run the ROMs. So what you want to do then is you want to go to Core Downloader, and it'll give you a list of every system that's available. And for today's test, we're going to do Nintendo 64, so you would scroll all the way down to Nintendo. There's a lot of Nintendo stuff. And the one I have installed with the little hash next to it there is Mupin 64 Plus Next. Now... The difference between these two is that Parallelly or Parallel is uh, basically a more accurate emulator, but it does take a lot more CPU, GPU power to run, and it still has a lot of problems. There's, a, there's still a lot of problems with this emulator as well. It's getting better every day, and it's, it will be fantastic. And if you just want to run N64 games in the resolution they were originally when they came out, uh, which I think is 320 by 480, maybe not even that, but it was around that, and in SD quality, obviously, really grainy and all that sort of stuff. Then, and you want the more accurate sort of representation of how it used to be, get Parallel, because basically, it's trying to machine accurate run the N64, as it was back then. But I want to go in HD, widescreen, make it look nicer and all that sort of stuff. So I do move in 64+. plus. So once you've done you just click that, and it will download down the bottom. I've already got it, so it won't bother to that. So I'm pressing um, backspace to go back in the emulator, by the way. You can use a controller. As you can see, if I press a button on my controller, it works also. Uh, so go back. Once you've got all those, that's pretty much all you're going to need. What you want to do next is you want to go to settings. Um, you want to go down to directory. And you want to set your directory for all your things where you're going to keep them. Now, it, wherever you installed it to, it's going to be by default. So mine's just eRetroArch. 
and then system for BIOS. So if you have any other systems like PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Dreamcast, all of that stuff, the BIOS files will go in a folder called system in RetroArch wherever installed to. Now, the main thing I change here is the file browser. It's set to default currently, um, but my game that I have is in my downloads folder and I just go use this directory, boom. And then it says downloads. So I go back and then I will go to main menu. I will go to configuration file and I'll save current configuration file. So it saves where it's going to be looking for, for my ROMs and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then basically all you have to do is you want to load the core. It's going to tell me I only have Nintendo 64 um, or I can download more, more cores or reinstall or start remote. But you just basically want to go, yeah, I'll start the core. So it says down here now that I'm running Moopin64, uh, in Vol it's the Vulcan version. It's just the most up-to-date version. If you did the download core, um, it'll download the newest version of it anyway. So then you just want to go load content. Uh, if I go start directory, it's going to show me where I put it. So E downloads, uh, and my game's going to be here. It's going to be... And I can load archive. If I load the archive, it'll play the game instantly. Okay. So the game is now running. It's probably a little bit loud, but I'll turn that down. <laughs> right. So the game's running. You'll notice that mine already looks nice and it's widescreen. Yours won't, however, yours will look very low quality and non-widescreen. So pressing F1 in this RetroArch front end will get you to an in-game options menu. And what you want to do is you want to go down to uh, Core Options, which is this one right here. And you want to make sure that you're on the Glide N64 plugin, which is this one here. There is other plugins. Again, Angry Line and Parallel uh, RDP is going to be more accurate, but they don't look as nice, uh, unless that's what you want. And then you can put like scan line filters on and all that sort of stuff. I'm not gonna go over filters today or anything like that, but I am gonna go over how to make like Donkey Kong 64 run well. And um, yeah, look nice. So basically go to your Glide 64 options here, set all these to a higher resolution it will be set to 320 by 240 that's what the default resolution of the n64 is i've set mine to 1080 so that's a non-widescreen option for 1080p uh, because a lot of games will not be in widescreen however if a game is in widescreen i have set it to 1080p it will be set to that by default so i've set it to those i've also set the aspect ratio to wide stretch because a lot of games will have borders and even with the wide stretched option they'll still have borders Native resolution factor is off. Threaded render will be off by default, but uh, I find that it's better to have that on. You will have a lot of sm a lot more smoother performance. It says it will increase input lag, but it really is a non-issue to be honest. Uh, Balanir filtering, I leave it on standard. Hybrid filtering on. Dithering, I just leave all these on default options. To be honest, it's fine. Color buffer to RDRAM, basically leave it all on. I'll leave it on default. Um, for this game and a lot of games, um, it's not going to matter anymore. But the one option you do want to change is this uh, I and I behavior. So I and I basically it was it's a relic of the past. So with this emulator, uh, Moopin and with a lot of emulators, they went off what settings were in an I and I file. We no longer really need that because the emulators have come such a long way that we don't really even need I and I files anymore. So we don't want to prioritize I and I. You can either disable them or you would prioritize one of the core options. So that's what I do. And then immediately after I've done all of that, I go back. Uh, your controls will be automatically set up with RetroArch. This is why I use RetroArch. So I'm using an Xbox Series X controller. It is automatic. Um, and it also will pick up if I plug it in and turn it off, plug it in. I'll do that and you'll see the little thing come up on the screen. So I've unplugged my controller. See, Xbox One controller disconnected. If I plug that back in, it'll automatically pick it up. And there it is. And it's working. So you don't really have to mess with it because people have already set this thing up um, the way it is. 
So that's pretty cool. Um, what you do want to do is you want to go to overrides and you want to go to save core overrides so that you can save the core. Or specifically for this game, because it's in widescreen, you might want to actually go save game override. And what that does, there's nothing to save at the moment. Override's not saved, but save core override worked before. And I've already got one at the top. See, active override file is my movement file that I've done before. So basically it remembers my settings. Uh, you can do it per game. You can do it per just the core itself. Um, you can also delete, unload the override and then save a different one if you want. But it's running my standard ones right now. Cheats. Um, cheats require uh, you to download cheats and put them in a cheats folder. Uh, I don't have any cheats. Shaders. Um, video shaders you can turn on. If you do that, um, then you can go down and choose a shader like uh, scan lines and all that sort of stuff. Um, on screen overlays is the same kind of thing. It lets you put like a border around it. So for games that aren't widescreen, um, you can have like a nice looking uh, like an N64 console either side of the screen where it's black normally because it's not widescreen. All that, all that good stuff. But I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to get into how to run N64 specifically. So if you go back to quick menu and go resume. Yours might not look as nice as mine straight away. But what you want to do is you want to go F1, close content. And you want to restart RetroArch, and you want to come back into RetroArch, and then it'll actually, you load the game again, and it'll actually look like mine, because sometimes the settings don't stick first time. Uh, also, if it doesn't turn widescreen immediately, you want to go back to settings, and I don't know why it went straight to that. Uh, video, scaling, it's on core provider right now, so my core provider option is actually widescreen, so that's fine. If it doesn't go into widescreen, again, exit RetroArch and go back into RetroArch. Um, there's a setting in the if I go quick menu, which is where I press F1 in the middle of the game. Uh, if I go to core options, you'll see that in my Glide 64 options, the aspect ratio is set to wide stretch. So that's what the core provided video will look like but you can actually if that doesn't work you can change it in the video options of RetroArch itself that's why I showed you that but that should actually be enough to run Donkey Kong perfectly uh, so basically you want to go to options in Donkey Kong and you'll see it's got a widescreen option it's also got a skip cutscene option if you want to which really helps if you've played the game before go to the game. I have not played the game, I just made a save file before as testing. But as you can see, the game's running nicely. There are black borders top and bottom and side because that is how the game is displayed normally. Um, once you get past this little text option, it'll open up a bit more. It's just a cinematic thing that Rare put in back in the day. There you go. You can actually crop the screen if you wanted to and stretch it out so it's actually full wide. Um, I don't tend to do that, but you can do that. Yeah, yeah, the game's working fine. Normally, this game will have a, a buggy camera, so the camera will be glitching like this all the time, no matter where you are. It just flickers all the time. If that happens, it's that any file, the INI file. Sorry, I'm still in the... Still call them inies. I don't know why. But it's the INI file, um, uh, like, prioritize option. So you change it to either off or prioritize the movement settings instead of it. And uh, it'll work much, much better. But as you can see, it's uh, running smoothly. Everything works. And yeah, that's all you really need to know about N64. Uh, you can just load up another game and it'll work. If you need it to not be widescreen, you can take that option off. And then do the save core overrides for that game. So that that game will, will load not widescreen. And you can have other games load in widescreen. But uh, that's all you really need to know about N64 emulation in 2023. If you're on an Android system, um, I can make another video about that another time if you really need me to. Uh, if you are, yeah, if you if you just want to run it on PC, I've shown you how to do that. So there are, you can also do the same sort of settings on the Xbox Series X, um, which I might go over again sometime soon because that's uh, it's pretty cool because you can run them in 4K and they run pretty perfectly as well. But yeah, I hope that's been helpful to you in some way.
Um, if it has, let me know in the comments. If you want me to go more in depth with more settings and uh, overlays and filters and how to stretch the screen so there's no black borders and all that sort of stuff as well, um, I can do that. Just let me know. But until next time, peace out.